Welcome to English on the Road, Episode 5, The Five Oceans. English on the Road is a podcast for English learners, and it's focused on geography, nature, and travel. Today, we're talking about the five oceans in the world, which are the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, and the, th the Southern Ocean. The Southern Ocean used to be called the Antarctic Ocean, but now it's called the Southern Ocean. So I have collected information about all of these oceans, and I will read a short introduction for each ocean and also share some interesting facts. And we will start with the Pacific Ocean. So let me read the information I collected. If there's some particularly difficult word or phrase, I will try to explain it to you in a simple way. The Pacific Ocean is the largest and deepest ocean on Earth, covering an area of approximately 165 million square kilometers and containing more than half of the world's ocean water. It stretches from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Southern Ocean in the south and is bounded by the continents of Asia and Australia to the west and North and South America to the East. So there's a word you may not know, bounded. The Pacific Ocean is bounded by the continents. So that is similar to being surrounded by or bordered by. You could also say bounded by. The Pacific Ocean is also known for its diverse marine life including whales, dolphins, sharks, and numerous species of fish. It is home to the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef system, and the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on Earth's surface, which reaches a depth of over 11,000 meters. The Pacific Ocean has played a significant role in human history serving as a major trade route between Asia and the Americas for centuries. It was also the site of many important naval battles during World War II. Today, the Pacific Ocean remains a vital resource for fishing, shipping, and natural resources such as oil and gas. It is also a popular destination for tourism offering opportunities for surfing, scuba diving, and other water sports. So there you have it, a brief introduction to the Pacific Ocean. Now let's talk about some interesting facts. So did you know the Pacific Ocean is so large that it covers an area greater than all of the Earth's land masses combined? So we can say land mass to describe the area of land on Earth. The Pacific Ocean is home to a large number of seamounts, which are undersea mountains that rise from the ocean floor. These seamounts can support a variety of marine life, including coral, fish, and other organisms. So seamounts is not exactly a common term. I think a lot of people would more simply say underwater mountains. The Pacific Ocean contains over 25,000 islands, many of which are located in the South Pacific region. Some of these islands include Hawaii and Tahiti. So there's a lot of beautiful islands in the Pacific Ocean. 
the ring of fire circles the Pacific Ocean. And the ring of fire is a region of high volcanic and seismic activity. Volcanic activity refers to volcanoes. Seismic activity refers to earthquakes. So the ring of fire is responsible for many of the world's largest earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So when a volcano explodes, we call it an eruption, a volcanic eruption. The Pacific Ocean is also home to the world's largest living structure, the Great Barrier Reef, which spans over 2,300 kilometers off the coast of Australia. So we use the verb span to describe the distance which something covers. So I'll say the sentence again, the Great Barrier Reef spans over 2,300 kilometers. The Pacific Ocean contains several deep sea trenches and a trench is like a valley underwater, including the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest point on Earth's surface. So those are some interesting facts about the Pacific Ocean. Let's move on to the next ocean, the Atlantic. So I will read the brief introduction to the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is the second largest ocean on Earth, covering an area of approximately 41 million square miles. Now in kilometers, that is 106 million square kilometers. It stretches from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Southern Ocean in the south, and is bounded by the continents of North and South America to the west, and Europe and Africa to the east. The Atlantic Ocean has played a significant role in human history, serving as a major trade route between Europe, Africa, and the Americas for centuries. It was the site of many important historical events, including the voyages of Christopher Columbus and other explorers. The Atlantic Ocean is also known for its diverse marine life. And for those of you who don't know, marine means something related to the ocean. So it's an adjective. So I could say marine life. It's about ocean life. The Atlantic Ocean is an important resource for fishing, shipping, and natural resources such as oil and gas. However, like other oceans, the Atlantic is facing numerous environmental challenges, including pollution, overfishing, which threaten the health of its ecosystems. So let's look at some facts about the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is the saltiest of all the world's oceans, with an average salinity of 3.5%. So that word, salinity, describes how much salt is in something. So the average salinity of the Atlantic Ocean is 3.5. The Atlantic Ocean is home to several species of whale, including the humpback whale, fin whale, and blue whale. The waters off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, are a popular spot for whale watching. I've always been interested uh, about whales, and I do hope to go whale watching someday. I just think it would be so magical to see an animal which is perhaps even bigger than the boat which you are in. The Atlantic Ocean also has several deep sea trenches, 
but not as deep as the Mariana Trench, of course. The deepest point is called the Puerto Rico Trench, and that reaches a depth of 8,600 meters. The Atlantic Ocean played a significant role in World War II, with the German U-boats attacking Allied shipping convoys in what was known as the Battle of the Atlantic. The Bermuda Triangle, a region in the western part of the Northern Atlantic Ocean, is known for a high number of mysterious disappearances of ships and planes. Have you heard about this region called the Bermuda Triangle? I've heard some theories about what's happening there, but you know, there's no, there's really no uh, hard evidence to explain it. The Atlantic Ocean is home to several small island nations, including Bermuda, the Bahamas, and Cape Verde, which have unique cultures and histories influenced by their location in the middle of the ocean. I think it must be quite different growing up in a country located in the middle of the ocean rather than on a huge continent like North America or Asia. Let's move on to the third largest ocean in the world, the Indian Ocean, which covers an area of approximately 73 million square kilometers. It is bounded by the continents of Asia, Africa, Australia, and on, in the south, the Southern Indian Ocean Ridge. And I guess this is the dividing point between that ocean and probably the Southern Ocean. But the Indian Ocean is known for its rich cultural history and diverse marine life, with many countries bordering its coasts and numerous island nature, nations scattered throughout its waters. It has been a major trade route for centuries. It connects Middle East, Africa, and Asia. There is a bunch of interesting ecosystems in the Indian Ocean, including coral reefs, mangrove forests, and seagrass beds. All of these ecosystems provide important habitats for many species. So let's look at some interesting facts about the Indian Ocean. I mentioned some of those island nations or island countries in the Indian Oceans, including the Maldives, Seychelles, Madagascar, and Mauritius. Another interesting fact is that the Indian Ocean is the warmest ocean in the world with an average temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty warm. Some of the interesting marine mammals include the humpback whale, the dugong, and the spinner dolphin. Now, I'm lucky enough to say that I once saw a dugong I was standing on a high cliff near the beach in Indonesia and we saw a dugong floating around beside the coast. Those are interesting animals, also sometimes known as a sea cow, a dugong. The Indian Ocean significantly impacts the climate of the surrounding regions of Southeast Asia and India. The monsoon season is influenced by the ocean, and this brings heavy rainfall, and it's also critical for agriculture.
What else can we say about the Indian Ocean? It has a long history of cultural exchange and trade, with merchants from India, China, Arabia, and East Africa trading spices, textiles, and other goods across the ocean. So we can see here, particularly with the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, that oceans are always tied up with human history and cultural exchange. And you can't really understand the history of these regions without also appreciating how the oceans impacted the situations. But let's move on to the Southern Ocean, also known as the Antarctic Ocean. It's the smallest and youngest of the world's five oceans. It surrounds Antarctica. And it extends from the coast of Antarctica to 60 degrees south latitude, where it meets the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans. The Southern Ocean is unique because it is the only ocean that circles the entire globe or the entire Earth without any land mass interruptions. So there's no land interrupting the flow of the ocean around the entire globe. It's also known for its extreme weather conditions and strong currents, which can make navigation difficult. Yeah, it's hard to imagine the weather down there. Can you imagine being on a boat in the middle of the Southern Ocean and a storm begins? How humbling and terrifying may that be? Of course, the Southern Ocean plays an important role in regulating global climate by absorbing and storing large amounts of CO2 and heat. It also has a significant impact on the Earth's ocean and atmospheric circulation systems. The Southern Ocean is also a critical area for scientific research, particularly in the fields of oceanography, climatology, and ecology. In recent years, it's also become a more popular tourist destination. A lot of people are interested in exploring Antarctica's untouched natural beauty. Because Antarctica is a continent with zero residents. At any given time, there's only a few thousand scientists living there, maybe some tourists, but... It has no residents, so the nature is beautiful and pristine. So here are some more facts. The Southern Ocean is home to a variety of unique marine life, including emperor penguins, Weddell seals, and several species of whales, such as humpbacks and orcas. Many of these... Uh, Fish and invertebrates, which live in the Southern Ocean, are found nowhere else on Earth. And I don't doubt that there's probably many, many species in the Southern Ocean which we still have not discovered. But it's difficult to explore. The Southern Ocean is the coldest and windiest on, on Earth, with extreme weather conditions that can make research and travel difficult. It's not easy. What else? Oh, I mentioned before the Southern Ocean is the youngest of the world's five. It was only officially recognized as a distinct ocean in the year 2000. Before that, it was considered to be part of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans.
So that is the Southern Ocean, and let's move on to the Arctic. So the Arctic Ocean is the smallest and shallowest of the world's five oceans. It is located in the Northern Hemisphere and is partially surrounded by the Arctic region of Europe, Asia, and North America. The Arctic Ocean covers an area of 14 million square kilometers and has an average depth of 1,205 meters. And the Arctic Ocean is unique because it is covered by sea ice for much of the year. With the ice cover reaching its maximum extent in the winter months. Despite the harsh climate and icy waters, the Arctic Ocean is home to a variety of unique marine life, including whales, seals, walruses, and several species of fish. Of course, the Arctic Ocean is currently facing a number of environmental threats, including climate change and melting sea ice, which are putting the region's delicate ecosystems and wildlife at risk. Despite the challenges, the Arctic Ocean is an important area for scientific research. And it's also a growing tourist destination. The problem with tourism in, in the Arctic and the Antarctic is that it's so far away and it's expensive, of course. And in a, in a way, you can say that maybe it's better if people don't go there because, you know, it's, it's kind of a, almost like a nature reserve, an area that should be protected. But I can understand the attraction. I would love to see it. So it is the smallest. The Arctic Ocean only covers about 3% of the Earth's surface. And it's the shallowest. The smallest and shallowest. Sometimes it's referred to as the frozen ocean because it's covered by ice for much of the year. But they have those amazing animals like polar bears, walruses, narwhals, whales. If you haven't seen a narwhal before, I encourage you to look it up. It's spelled N-A-R-W-H-A-L, narwhal. Very interesting animal. And ah, one more thing about the Arctic Ocean is that it's home to several unique natural phenomena, such as the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis. And as a point of interest, that is caused by solar particles colliding with the Earth's atmosphere and producing colorful displays of light in the sky. And to quickly review, the five oceans are the Pacific, Arctic, Indian, Southern, and Atlantic. Did I say them all? Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, Arctic. There we go. And that is our podcast today about the five oceans of the world. I hope it was helpful for your English listening. And check out our episode from last week, which was about the 10 smallest countries in the world. Thanks for listening to English on the Road, an English podcast about geography, travel, and nature for English learners. Stay tuned for the next episode, and good luck studying English.